Firefighters have a superstition. When someone is new and hasn't fought their first fire yet, the longer it takes from that person being hired to that first fire, the worse the fire will be. Many years ago, considering the career prospects in my field, I decided to dip my toes into high schools. I figured the best way to do that would be just try being a sub for a little while. So I got myself registered and I started going online looking for sub positions. The way it works is you get hired and then you go to their website, you look for assignments and you click on them. I waited almost a month, nothing. I was getting really impatient. I really wanted to try this. I called them up, I asked them why I wasn't getting assignments and they said, well, let's see, did you pick enough schools? Yeah, I picked enough schools, etc., etc." I kept waiting and waiting and finally, finally something came up. Uh, the class was called Intensive Reading, and this is a high school class, mind you. I didn't really know what it was, I didn't care, I just wanted to try. So, I clicked on it, and I went in. That morning, I go in quite a bit early, I mean, I'm nervous, I don't want to be rushing there in the last minute, and I'm looking for some sort of instructions on the teacher's desk, and there's nothing. Just a pile of papers, none of it makes any sense. I called in the assistant principal and explained it to her. All she could do, think to do was tell the students to do what was on the board. Many of the students claimed they had already done that. To this very day, I don't know if that's true. But as class began, she gave them a really stern talking to. She kept saying, I don't want any trouble. I don't want to be back and forth here all day. Don't want you all acting like a bunch of wild animals, etc., etc. And I was thinking, isn't she being a little harsh? Uh, then she left, and things started going crazy. The students were talking, not at a normal volume, but they were loud. They were rambunctious. Couldn't get them to calm down the whole time. Um, they had their, I guess, assignment from off the board. I think some of them did it, but it was just a rowdy class. I thought, huh, that was a crazy class. Hopefully the next one will be better. Um, the second session didn't get any better. Then we get to the third one. Here's where I started to notice that something was seriously wrong. A girl says to me, is it okay if I go into her class? Um, she was referring to the assistant principal. And I said, why would you want to do that? And she said, sometimes I go in her class instead of this one. And I said, well, if I call her and ask her, will she say it's okay? And she said, yeah. So I called her and she said, yeah, sometimes students, when they think they might be in a bad situation, they call me over and I'm just thinking, this is really peculiar. Well, the students just got crazier and crazier, and the assistant principal came in because of the noise was so loud. She gave them another big lecture, and she said, you know what intensive reading is? It means you can't read worth a damn. And one student's like, I can read. And she's like, yes, but you won't apply yourself. I realized something. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a special ed. Yeah, this is that ESE stuff that I was talking about in that other video. They can call it whatever they like, intensive reading, they can call it ESE, it's, it's all the same. It's where they quarantine students who are trouble. Rather than trying to fix the problem, they quarantine the problem so that it won't spread. Needless to say, the rest of the day was rough. And towards the end, I stopped caring. I was just like, okay, I'm never going to take one of these classes again. So, in the last period, uh, there were a lot of jocks in there. A lot of guys, football jerseys and all that. They were actually pretty nice to me. Shook my hand, called me sir, and all that. And there were several posters around the room that said, Open Mic Friday. They were all over the classroom. These guys said, you know what we do on Fridays? We have Open Mic. Um, we basically sit around and we rap. And I said, really? Like, yeah, you see all that Open Mic Friday? Even though I kind of knew they were pulling something on me, I didn't care. I said, okay, let's see it. So they all started doing these like rap battles back and forth. Uh, started getting a little crude towards the end, and then I had brought it to a stop. There were only like five minutes left anyway. And I said, okay, I know you guys pulled a fast one on me. Honestly, I don't care at this point. Let me just collect your assignments. You got five minutes left, etc. So that was the end of the day. I re left a rather lengthy note for the teacher, went home with a severe headache. I took a few other subbing assignments after that. Uh, some of them went more smoothly, but they were few and far between. These were just classes with regular kids. A few of them were even with AP kids. But even the AP kids pulled one on me one time. I just, I have too much of a trusting nature. What can I say? I hope my college students aren't planning something now. 
But anyway, so the AP kids had a quiz and they collectively band together and swore that the teacher had postponed the quiz. I just said, I'm going to hand it out because that's my instructions and whatever you hand to me, I'm handing to her. So they said, well, we're not going to take it. And I said, okay, so hand it back to me blank and I'll let her do whatever she wants. So I guess I didn't really fall for it because, hey, I handed it to them, they handed it back blank. Um, as I understand, they all got zeros later. They were lying through their teeth. Didn't get another subbing assignment for the longest time. Then I saw three days of intensive reading. This is where it got really crazy. So I took this assignment. On the first day, about third period, there was this girl who asked for a hall pass. She never came back. Took the hall pass and then all the kids in the room wanted a hall pass. And I was like taking numbers one after another and I was handwriting them out, letting them go one at a time. And never heard from that one girl until like the end of the period. There was another girl that just up and left class at some point and you know I called the main office told them to hunt her down and all that and anyway so that was the first day. Second day was a little better and that one girl who you know I had to call the office on she came in and I'm like you're not supposed to be here are you? And she said no and she walked out. I don't know I don't care. Well, I thought, okay, I'll get through this all right. One more day. Well, the third day, this is where things went nuts. Uh, it was about third period. This, by the way, is the lunch period. And the way it works is they have a regular class and somewhere in between everyone goes to lunch. They usually break the school into three different segments for lunch so that the cafeteria isn't crowded all at once. Well, anyway, when my group went to lunch, uh, then they came back. Uh, during the third lunch segment. I was in the second. I would say about five, ten minutes into it, about 20 kids just busted into the classroom, started yelling and shaking hands with everybody and hollering. I was like, who are you people? And they just ignored me. And I was like, you're not supposed to be here. They just ignored me. I said, okay, you all need to get out of here right now. I'm calling security. They just ignored me. I ran over to the phone to call security and this girl pulled the phone line. Not kidding. She pulled the phone line. So I looked out the hall, saw a security officer, and I shouted for him. He said, you need me? I said, yes, please come down. He's like, why didn't you call? And I said, this girl pulled my phone line. Well, he was like, oh, man. He got on his walkie-talkie. Two minutes later, three police officers come in. Think the girl got arrested. I know they took her out of the classroom. I don't know what they did with her after that. Um, I mean, what was she thinking? She pulled the phone cord. Really? So that was my last subbing experience. And you know, that last time, um, the, here's a little detail I left out. It, it, on the third day when a lot of students were coming and going just whenever they wanted, whenever my back was turned, uh, the assistant principal for that section said, well, I'm going to lock the door so that it's not a revolving door. And it was then that I started calling these classes in prison reading. And I realized, I'm not a teacher here. I'm a correctional officer. I'm a prison guard. So... That's my experience with public schools, the, the bit of experience I have. This was Duval County. It's usually one of the worst counties in Florida. And, you know, Florida, compared to other states, doesn't do particularly well in public education. So I was pretty near the bottom of the barrel. But based on that experience, I don't know if I'll ever try being a high school teacher again. And if I do, I am not going to be a prison guard not doing any special classes. Those kids need a certain kind of attention that I just can't give them. I'm really not fit for that sort of thing. Well, I hope you enjoyed these uh, interesting and horrifying stories. I hope I haven't discouraged anyone. Some of you might be better fit for that sort of job, but it's clearly not for me. Thank you. Oh, what a relief it is. What a relief.